Nairi Woods, <coughs> uh, Dean of the Blavatnik School of Government, as well as a Professor of Global Economic Government here at Oxford. Your work certainly by no stretch restricted to the beautiful ivory towers of, our, of Oxford here. Advisor to IMF Board, UNDP's Human Development Report. And you also um, edited a book, Inequality, Globalisation and World Politics, not just this year, not last year, but last century, which shows <laughs> how long ahead, uh, far ahead oh, Naira was. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you even remember that book. <laughs> so tell me and paint me your picture, Nairi. Well, I guess um, I, I had the great luck to grow up in New Zealand at a time in New Zealand when being one of a lot of children being raised by a, a, a mother... I could go to a great high school and I could go to a great university and, I, and nobody had to pay fees. I just had to find my way to pay living expenses. And that, that opportunity is one that, that I think we're all agreed is open to far too few people today. We've got to think about why. I think that the motivator for me as quite a radical young student was realising that you could have real transformations, not perfect government, but what absolutely riveted me was the fact that you could take a country like Cuba with extraordinary levels of illiteracy, prostitution and such like, and with a change in government, whether revolutionary or not, you could transform the lives, you could improve literacy in one generation, in one huge leap. Likewise in Nicaragua, or that or if you take Lyndon Johnson's War on Poverty and look at the effect of a set of policies on a group of people. And what's interesting is that we, we tend, for all kinds of reasons, not to celebrate these great leaps in government. I'm not saying that everything any of these governments did was wrong. And, of course, people will criticise Lyndon Johnson for the war in Vietnam. People will criticise Cuba and Nicaragua for, the, for, the, for other elements of their policies. But just stop for a minute and think what it means to take a population, most of whom are completely in despair, and transform their lives by raising literacy from a tiny fraction of the population to 90%. That's an extraordinary achievement that government can do, and that government collaborating with others can do even better, and that we can now innovate to do. So that's what drives me, and that's what drove me to create a school of government where we can learn how to do that in a 21st century way. Thank you very much indeed.